Hello and welcome to this, the East Lancashire Railway information film entitled Dual Pipe Air Brakes. Dual Pipe Air Brakes are now uh, common on steam locomotives that ride the main lines and of course were already built into a lot of the life expired diesels that we now find on the ELR. Normally we use a vacuum system but more and more air brakes are becoming prevalent on preserve railways. So let's take a look at the air brake system and its application on the railway. Looking at the end of our carriage here we can see that there are two continuous pipes on each vehicle, namely the brake pipe and the main reservoir pipe. The brake pipe is the red one and the main res pipe is the yellow one both of which are controlled by the handles red and yellow that we can see here on the buffer beam. These standard British Railways diagrams show the end of the carriage to look something like this and we will refer to this diagram as we go through our description of the elements that go towards the uh, braking system. As we can see here hose 8 is the uh, brake pipe and hose 7 is the main reservoir pipe. The heads to the brake pipe flexible hose are one inch diameter looking something like this and those to the uh, main reservoir pipe are fitted with three quarter inch diameter couplings with a star valve in the middle of it. So if you're stuck in the dark and can't figure out which is which look for this star valve. When undertaking a brake test or having joined the two pipes together it's necessary to turn the two levers on. When the handle is in the direction of the pipe you know the system is open. When it's perpendicular it's off. Our schematic diagram shows that the pipework passes from one end of the carriage straight through to the other. And what we will do is divide it into two areas to look at. That inside the guards van and the appendages which are below the sole bar, those bits that actually apply the brakes. The just Underneath the sole bar we can see that we have the distributor and the air tank immediately behind it. This holds 100 psi of air. From the other side the distributor, the air tank and the yellow switch that we can see is the isolating valve. The brake pipe is connected to the distributor which governs the supply of compressed air to the brake cylinders. The distributor is sensitive to brake pipe pressure and passes air from the auxiliary reservoir to the brake cylinders on reduction of brake pipe pressure. When the pressure is raised the brake cylinders will exhaust and the brake release takes place. The isolating valve is usually situated close to the strainer check valve and choke unit on the main reservoir pipe side and it provides a means of closing the supply of compressed air to the auxiliary reservoir from the main reservoir pipe. This is necessary as part of the air brake isolating procedure. The auxiliary reservoir stores the air which is then admitted when required to the brake cylinders via the distributor when a brake application is made. The auxiliary reservoir is automatically recharged in one of two ways. One from the main reservoir pipe through the strainer, check valve and choke unit seen previously or from the brake pipe via the distributor if working in single pipe formation. Each carriage has its own compressed air auxiliary reservoir. Now our locomotive has come on let's take a look at how to couple the air brake system between the locomotive and the train. and then talk to you through what we do and why we do it really. Obviously at this point I'm in danger. Anything could move here and crush me so you've got to think of your own protection. So the first thing you always do when you get under is you always make sure none of these two can move. How you do that with air brake is you open the valves. Obviously if the valves are open 
you can't create a brake on the loco and nothing can move. So at that point, we're safe. I'm safe now. I can uh, work to my heart's content. The rule is that you only put pipes up once you've got the shackle. Okay, because obviously if you just put pipes together, something does move, first thing that's going to rip is all the pipes. Now, believe me, they're quite expensive and difficult. Okay, so first thing you get under, open up the brake valves, nothing can move. Now you do the shackle. I won't talk to you about the shackle because I'm sure you've seen it enough time. But essentially, oh. Okay, once that's over, just a matter of turning up, the other way. Like that. So two threads on each side. Right. Once you've done that, the next thing to do is your main reservoir. What you find on the coach is there's two, usually two yellows on the loco, one either side. And on the coach there's only one. So make sure before you get under that you find out which side you want to be. Do you want to be this side or this side? Obviously if it's this side you use these main res pipes. It's that side, it's obviously the other. But as you know, there's only one train pipe, so that's usually pretty central uh, to match the edge. So I usually get my pipes out, just so they're all ready. Obviously making sure you don't um, put the wrong one to the wrong one. Okay, simple way to do it. Just bend it up with one hand, bend that up with the other, pull them together, and hopefully, wrong here. There. That's it. You see that? Bend them up, put them together. Okay, it's a good idea at this stage to open up the valves. Now remember there's about 90 psi going through here. So you'll find a lot of missing if you only do one at a time like that. Okay, so the secret is you do them both together. Now at that point you'll know if you've put this together right. Because sometimes if you don't put it together you'll get a hissing sound. Obviously you're back to square one to start again. Okay? Same with the brake pipes. Lift them up. Just drop them in together. Okay, that's it. Obviously making sure that the pipes go that direction. At this point I want to get out now, because obviously the loco can move. But is there any question that you don't want me to do anything again, or... Oh, okay with that? Yes, thank you. When right. the valves are all stayed, then angles are in the direction of the pipe, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, that's right. That's, um, <laughs> that's, that's closed, that's so closed nothing's down. going through. Yeah. You open that, that'll obviously go through. And any kinks in it will get blown out get once, blown he, once he creates the air anyway. In the same way that Steve joined the loco to the carriages, between any carriages we can see that the uh, brake pipes are open. The handles are in the direction of the pipe. And we can see that they've been secured. Top one brake pipe, bottom one main res and the other one is heating. Having coupled our locomotive up, let's head back to the diagram and take a look at what we can see in the guards van as we do a brake test. Inside the guards van the setup is very much the same as we have for vacuum brakes. We have a handle which when pulled down will apply the brakes. And above that we have a gauge which shows the value within the main reservoir and in the brake pipe. There's a little aid memoir behind the uh, brake lever here which shows that when you pull it down it's open and in the position it's in at the moment it's closed. With our locomotive having charged the system up we can see that the yellow finger is on 100 and the red finger is on about 75. This shows that the train brake pipe, the red one, has about £75 in it and the yellow one, the auxiliary reservoir pipe, has about 100 psi in it. To undertake the brake test we need to go back to the last carriage in the rake. Take 
the uh, brake pipe in your hand firmly and open the valve. As you can see, the air rushes out quite violently. Give it a minute and make sure that it empties properly. Go to the side of the carriage and check that the brakes have been applied on this bogey. The brake block will be hard against the wheel. The rule book states that we have to check the brakes on the last three carriages to make sure that they're all on. Best way to do that is to give them a good kick. Back in the brake van we can see that the uh, pressure in the brake, the train brake pipe has dropped to zero, the brakes are applied and that our uh, main res pipe still has 100 psi in it. Okay, Having confirmed the continuity through the train, yeah. the loco then brings the brake pipe pressure back up to 70-75 psi. With the brake pipe pressure back up, the brake blocks themselves will come off the wheels and uh, if you give them a good kick, you'll be able to see that they're quite oh, slack. Thank you very much. Mechanically, the air has been applied to the piston seen here underneath the carriage. This piston has pushed out and what it's done is to move this lever here so that the uh, connecting rods all the way through to the bogey, then apply the brakes. Now let's see what happens when an application is made. When the system is fully charged with a brake pipe pressure of 72.5 pounds per square inch, the brakes are held in the release position. The main reservoir pipe pressure would normally be 85 to 100 pounds per square inch. An application is made by the driver reducing the brake pipe pressure with the locomotive brake valve. Maximum brake cylinder pressure being reached when the brake pipe pressure is reduced to 45 pounds per square inch. It is possible to graduate both application and release of the brakes in steps as required. Only in an emergency application would the brake pipe pressure be below the value of 45 pounds per square inch. The brakes are released by restoring the brake pipe pressure to 72.5 pounds per square inch. OK, we've seen how things work in the uh, perfect world, but what do we do if something goes wrong? Here is how to isolate a carriage. Firstly, the distributor lever must go from open to isolated. And then we must do the same with the main reservoir isolating cock. This goes from open to closed or isolated. You then want to pull the string or the lever at the base of the distributor and this will release the brakes on the carriage. Here's an easy way to remember what we've just said. The reservoir isolating cock is turned to isolated. The distributor isolating cock is turned to isolated. Pull the strings and kick the brake blocks. That's Rick, Dick, pull and kick. There are several things that have to be remembered when isolating one of the carriages. For example, not more than one piped only vehicle on which the automatic brake is isolated may be permitted. If the through pipe is operative, the vehicle may be conveyed provided that the train comprises at least five vehicles, as indeed this one does, or the automatic brake is operative on the last vehicle in the train. Also, if the brake is no longer operative on the last vehicle, the train may continue if the line is level or on a falling gradient, or the last vehicle is a brake van in which the guard must ride. Otherwise, the train must be assisted in the rear. 
In all circumstances, the speed must not exceed 5 miles an hour. If a through pipe is no longer available, a check must be made by the train crew and guard that the train is still complete. These arrangements are permitted only to enable the train to reach the next location where the defect can be remedied or the vehicles detached or the vehicles remarshalled or a brake van provided. If practicable, passengers must be transferred from any vehicle on which the brake is inoperative at the rear of the train. You have been watching an East Lancashire Railway information film on dual pipe air brakes. This program was compiled and edited by Atlantic Video View for the Guards Department of the East Lancashire Railway.